Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through the steps to generating your keywords for your literature search. So already on this channel I've done two videos related to the literature review. So the first video I did, I did was how I read research papers and sort of the steps along the way for deciding whether or not I'm going to read the full paper, whether it's relevant to me and all of that. So I did that video and then that had a lot of people wondering how I, you know, come up with these papers or what are the main steps I take in doing the literature review. So I made a video about the main steps for the literature review. So if you haven't seen either of those videos, I'll have them both linked down below. But then that video had people asking, how do I do the literature search element? So in this video, I'm going to be talking about the search, the first kind of steps for coming up with your keywords to do a search and everything on those lines. And then there'll be a subsequent video about how to actually do the search. So if you want to see that video, be sure you're subscribed and that you have the notification bell on all notifications so that you know when that video is uploaded. If you like this video and you want to see more of this content, be sure you are giving a like and that you are commenting down below so that I know to keep making these videos. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoy the video. But just to mention briefly as well, the things that I say about how to do research, it's just what I'm finding to be useful and whatever works for you is what you should be doing or whatever your supervisor says is good in your research area, that's probably what you should be following. It's just that I have been asked questions about this, so I'm sharing what I've been learning and what I've been doing. So don't think that it's the be all and end all, it's just what I've personally been finding useful. And I hope that you will find it useful as well. So as I mentioned, this video is going to be about the literature search and how to find papers for a literature review. So a good starting point for finding papers is to actually ask your supervisor, what are the key researcher research papers and the key researchers themselves in the field, as well as the appropriate databases to be looking for. So in this way, you'll have then a list of a few main papers that are a really good starting place because you can read through those, understand the general topic and look for relevant sources in the reference list. That way you'll come up with a lot of alternative options for papers that you can use in your literature review. So those are two great ways to get some initial papers. One is asking your supervisor or colleagues in the field as well, whichever, you know, suits, but your, your supervisor will generally know the research area the best and to find some of those initial papers and then figure out who cites them and who they're citing. And then as well, you can also um, look at other literature reviews in the, and the related work sections in theses of your research area. And that's a really important point because looking at how people in your field do a literature review is very important to understand how you should probably do a literature review. So what kind of style it should be in. Is it a more systematic review in these cases or is it a more traditional literature review that just aims to provide an overview? So that'll definitely depend what field you're in. So like for me in computer science, it's more related work that is more of the traditional literature review, whereas in health sciences and medical sciences, it could be more of a systematic review that you should be doing for your literature review. So figure out how they are in your field and do they define the explicit objectives? Do they define the search protocol, the inclusion exclusion strategy? All of those things are really important things to know. And again, if you're unsure about that stuff, ask your supervisor how things are traditionally done in your field because they are gonna be the, pe the person that knows the, the most about it. So I just wanted to briefly talk about what a literature review is over a systematic review. And it may be possible that you need to do a systematic review, in which case there will be a lot more steps that you need to take. But in a literature review, it's more aiming to give an overview of the topic and provide a summary of a motivation for the review. You don't need to set up explicit ob objectives. And this is all traditionally now, typically for a literature review, you don't need to set explicit objectives. You don't need to include search protocol, the inclusion exclusion criteria you followed, your search strategy or your process of selecting articles, or even not necessarily the evaluation of the quality of the studies you're talking about. So the literature review is a lot more open, whereas in a systematic review, you have to include all of those things. 
And there's nothing wrong with following a systematic process for your literature review. It can actually be very helpful for you to make sure that you're staying on track and staying unbiased if you want to have more of a systematic literature review without necessarily including all of that in the review, saying that you followed this protocol and these were your criteria. But you might want to actually follow those steps anyways and then just not talk about it as much in your literature review. So the problem with literature reviews traditionally is when you're making the summary of the literature and the gaps in the literature, it can be influenced by your opinions as well as not having the study quality can really, I'm not really sure why that sometimes is the case, but it means that there can be some reviewer bias and it means that the process, the literature review process you followed is not repeatable because you didn't follow a strategy. And that's why it can be good if you wanted to follow more of a systematic review nature to get more of an understanding of the area in a, in, a, in a systematic way so that you can go back if you ever wanted to repeat this and make sure you get the same sources, you would be able to do that. So the first step then will be doing a scoping search. So that's a free text search where you try to understand, has there been a similar systematic review completed before? So we're going to be talking about now some of the systematic review steps, but these can be implemented by you for your literature review. But again, you don't have to follow this strategy. That's the thing about the literature review. You don't have to follow this, but I think it's very helpful if you are struggling to get those initial sources. This can be a very good way to do it. So the first step will be determining if your question has been answered already through another systematic review. You may find that you find some similar systematic reviews that don't really answer your question, but they're similar in some sense. And finding those papers will help you get an early idea of the key papers in your field, the gaps in the knowledge, as well as identifying what might be the best search strategies, the inclusion exclusion criteria, and what kind of keywords or search terms might be useful for you to use. So that's a good place to start. Um, once you know your research question, you can do the scoping search to see what kind of research has been done for this question specifically already. Has it been answered? So that's obviously a good thing to know in the beginning. And then the next thing to do will be defining your research question in terms of search terms. So your research question should include the type of population, the interventions and outcomes that are of interest to you in your study. So there are a couple of different acronyms that people use in order to do so. So the two most popular ones, as far as I've seen, has been PICO and SPIDER, but there are also some alternatives mentioned down the bottom that you can easily look up and see what they mean and see does that suit your study more or less. And a lot of these are most understandable from a medical science perspective, but so it takes a little bit longer for you to understand them in your own terms. I found being in computer science when I first learned about these, it was quite difficult to determine how these translated for me. So PICO is population, so that what kind of participants are you talking about? The intervention, so the thing that was um, of interest in the study to, uh, to achieve. The comparison, so what's the alternative method that's traditionally used? So you've got the intervention and then the comparison, and then what were the outcomes? And then for SPIDER, you've got the setting, the phenomenon of interest, the design, the evaluation, and the research type. That one made a bit more sense to me initially because I could see directly how that could be compared to the computer science setting, but I think the first one, if you think about it a little bit more, can also be similarly used. So if you define your research question by even just writing out these um, terms and filling in the blanks of what your population intervention comparison outcomes are, then that's a really good place to start because you have your research question in quite a concise way then. You only have those things and it's not like a long, unnecessary list of terms. So that's why using a strategy or a protocol like this is really useful because it gets your, your research question down into a concise format. So then from there, we want to actually determine our keywords. So using that protocol, that whichever one you choose that makes the most sense to you, you've got now your search terms in that list in your generic like 
most understandable format for those keywords. And then you want to come up with all the alternative keywords for those search terms. So for example, if I have population, for me would be marathon runner, but I could also say marathoner or runner, any of those things. So you want to come up with the alternative possible keywords that could be used in your search. So you'll have only a few search terms, like main terms using the Pico or Spider. So you'll only have like four to six main search terms, but you can have a ton of different alternative search terms and they'll be combined in your search with using the or method. So mine will have marathon runner or marathoner and injury, you know, something like that. So you want to come up with all these alternatives. So think about the alternative vocabulary that might be used in your field, alternative spellings, stemming so that's turning a word that could be computer computation computationally and turning it into compute which is the stem of that word um, and then that means you don't have to type in all of the different possible words you'll just use the stem of it and then abbreviations acronyms all of those things that might come up so for me i have running related injury is often referred to as or or i so coming up with all of those alternatives is a really important step because then that means your keyword search will be a lot more concise. So basically now you understand the three steps. We have the scoping search to determine if your um, question has already been answered, what kind of systematic reviews are already available. Then we have defining our research question in terms of the search protocol and fr from there determining your keywords. So the next step after that will be carrying out the search, which I've decided to do in a separate video because when I first learned about these, it was in two different workshops and I think trying to do it all together can be a bit confusing. So I think it's good for you to come up with your keywords before working on the next step, which will be carrying out the search. So if you want me to make that next video, guys, be sure you do like this video and give it a thumbs up and comment below if you enjoyed this video and if you want to see the next one, as well as subscribe if you want to see the next video and turn on all notifications so that you do know when it is uploaded. I have been enjoying making these videos, but I just want to make sure it is something you guys are enjoying. So getting that feedback from you is really important to me. And yeah, so that is it for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it and I hope you will be sticking around for the next video. If you have any questions or if there's anything that's unclear, let me know in the comments below and I'll see you guys in the next video.